Hello, leasing and property management review. Um, you're going to have probably two property management questions as a salesperson, as a broker, um, probably five. Here's what I want you to know is I get feedback all the time that says, Amy, there were so many more property management questions, state and national, and I wasn't expecting it. Now, when we get to this state review, I'm going to set you up on what is specific to property management um, for the state of Iowa. Um, but overall, as a theme, I want you to know that it might feel like that because we're overlapping terms. So, for example, replace seller with landlord or property owner. And we've just been talking about buyers and sellers as our examples in our review time, but replace seller for landlord, replace listing contract for property management contract, replace buyer for tenant, and replace um, lease for purchase contract or purchase agreement. So, Overall, when it comes to representing um, a property owner as a property manager, cold AC still applies. The fiduciary responsibilities of care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, confidentiality, you still owe that to the landlord as a property manager when you're a licensed real estate agent. Um, when it comes to a contract, the idea of what makes a valid contract and the two I've had you focus on is a legal purpose with legal, legal uh, competent parties. If that says a lease with a minor, it's still voidable. We've already talked that that is a voidable contract. It's not automatically void. Automatically void is if they were already proven um, mentally incompetent within a court of law. So. It might seem like there's more because of the language, but contracts are still contracts. That is a property management agreement. Um, a uh, representation agreement between a seller or a landlord or a tenant and a buyer, like same thing, leases still needs to be um, a valid contract. So don't let the words, I feel like I'm rattling on to you. Maybe I am. Don't let the language trip you up, there's still harmony in it. There's still harmony in it. Um, just I think where we see some things um, with leasing and property management um, is we've got just some different terms that show up in terms of what a property manager does. And um, a property manager is going to do not just the marketing, and not just um, taking care of lease agreements, those contracts, but they're also probably going to be responsible for doing um, cash flow or profit and loss reports, um, settling the books. They're going to be taking in rents and paying out um, service fees such as lawn care, uh, grounds maintenance. Uh, garbage, um, maybe any sort of utilities. So it's just a little bit different what they do. But again, contract is still a contract. Now, another place where you might have just a couple little nuances um, of something different um, is going to be around actual lease types. Um, and there's a few here that we're just going to go through real quick um, with that percentage, gross, and net. And a percentage uh, lease um, is a great candidate, I think, possibly for a uh, test question for you. Um, but let's start with gross and net. Let, don't let me get ahead of myself. A gross lease is where the tenant pays a fixed rent 
and some or all of their utility expenses where the landlord is gonna pay for taxes, insurance, and repairs. For those of you that have ever leased an apartment, this is probably what you're most familiar with. Um, you paid a fixed rent every month. You maybe paid cable, um, heat, and the landlord took care of everything else. Okay, the taxes on the building, um, the insurance for the overall building, I would still recommend you get renter's insurance for probably a mere $10 a month, but they took care of the building and grounds insurance. A net lease um, is when the tenant or the renter takes care of everything. Utilities, property taxes, um, the hazard insurance, everything. And you might be wondering why. And let me anchor this with you. This is just, this isn't a hard and fast rule, but conceptually, I think it helps. Gross leases are great for shorter term loans. Sorry, shorter term loans, shorter term leases. Okay. Um, where long leases of, let's say, 15 years, because an industrial company, a big industrial company, isn't going to come and lease a building for six months with all their heavy equipment, machinery, trade fixtures galore. They're sometimes going to do a 10 to 20 year lease. And um, having them pay rent plus all of the expenses is advantageous to the landlord because if they just did a fixed rent of $5,000 a month, by the time we got to year 15, they may be losing money because we know property taxes would have gone up significantly in those 15 years. So it's a way for them to control their base. Now, a percentage lease can sometimes be on its own or be tied to a gross or net lease. Um, that percentage lease usually does best um, at the mall or for retail spaces. And this is where um, the tenant pays a percentage of their sales as their rent. So a great test question is, a booming business comes to town and wants to lease a space from you. Booming business comes to town, they wanna to set up a second location in your uh, strip mall, what is the best way to charge them rent? Well, if it's a booming business, you wanna capitalize on their profits. So probably your best answer is a percentage lease, okay? Again, your key elements of a lease um, are really the same. Uh, capacity to have a contract, uh, mental capacity, it's gotta be for a legal objective. There's gotta be an offer and acceptance and then some sort of valid consideration um, which is an exchange of promises, okay? Uh, fiduciary responsibilities, again, care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, confidentiality. Um, we're going to talk at length about fair housing under uh, the practice of real estate under that section. Um, but I think fair housing is one that really gets explored. And if there's any fair housing complaints, I would say it happens in rentals against landlords way more than it does residential real estate sales or commercial. Um, but I would say ADA compliance, um, that is one that is the Americans with Disabilities Act. It really is not about housing. It's about access to goods and services and employment. However, it does really affect the tenant in the sense that if the landlord advertises as handicap accessible, it better be handicap accessible. So I think that that's really what comes in. Now for broker only, this talks about setting rents and lease rates. And I would say that this is maybe a good time to know how to calculate square footage and price per square foot. So to calculate square footage is length times width of the uh, 
uh, space. Um, and then just make sure that you pay attention to the question if it wants an annual or a monthly rent, because that will determine if you need to multiply or divide by 12 to get where you want to go. Okay, short little wrap up. Again, a pretty small question um, or a pretty small section. Um, but again, I think my main theme is don't overcomplicate and think you don't know something. You do. Lease purchase agreement, seller, landlord, buyer, tenant, listing agreement, property management agreement. There's a lot of actual overflow on it, okay? Again, good luck.